More than 25,000 patients have an external ventricular drain placed each year. Many of these patients end up undergoing procedures that require anesthesia, and anesthesia professionals may be expected to manage them. However, some anesthesia professionals may not be comfortable managing these, and complications such as overdrainage or underdrainage of CSF, inadvertent injection of medications into the brain, and elevations in intracranial pressures can lead to poor neurological outcomes. So what should we do about EVDs? Stay tuned for part two of this series to learn about the preoperative management, and don't forget to go to APSF.org EVD to learn more about the EVD Safety Campaign, a global patient safety initiative led by the Society for Neuroscience and Anesthesiology and Critical Care and APSF. Part one of this series, we discussed why the safe perioperative management of EVDs is important. So what are some evidence-based best practice recommendations for these patients? First, it's critical to perform a detailed baseline neurologic exam, check the setting and output of the EVD, and review any trends in intracranial pressure and cerebral spinal fluid characteristics before surgery, so you have a baseline and so you can better detect when a change occurs. Second, when transporting patients with an EVD, certain measures should be assessed, such as whether the drain is clamped, head of bed elevation, and proper leveling of the external auditory meatus. This is crucial to maintain drain functionality and prevent complications during transport, which is a significant period of vulnerability. Also ensure that intracranial pressure is being monitored during transport. Stay tuned for part three of this series where we will discuss intraoperative management of EVDs. And don't forget to go to APSF.org slash EVD to learn more about the EVD Safety Campaign, a global patient safety initiative led by the Society for Neuroscience in Anesthesiology and Critical Care and APSF. In part two of this series, we discuss the preoperative management of patients with EVDs. Today, let's discuss how to manage these drains intraoperatively. First, during surgery, it's important to monitor and manage indwelling drains continuously, which includes confirming tubing identification, head of bed status, and leveling of the EVD to ensure proper function and reading. Care should be taken to distinguish the EVD from other lines that may be present. Detailed handoff communication between intensive care and anesthesia providers should occur to ensure that no information is lost. Finally, sudden changes in CSF drainage, CSF color, and ICP waveform should provoke immediate response, timely intervention, and prompt communication with the surgical team. To learn more about resources on EVDs, go to APSF.org EVD.